Today, I'm gonna be completely remaking the first pop song that I ever produced from the ground up, and I'm gonna be fixing a lot of the mistakes that I made eight years ago when I made the song the first time. Let's check it out. What's up, Austin here from Make Pop Music. A couple weeks ago, we had a video on this channel where I listened to the first pop song that I ever produced and we critiqued it. We talked about things that we liked, things that we didn't like. And so now what I wanna do is I wanna go in and completely remake that song from the ground up. So if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. It's just a couple videos ago, but today we're gonna remake that song from the ground up so I can show you everything that I would do differently now. So we're gonna hop into Cubase and check that out. I will give you just a quick listen. Like I said, you can go back and check that last video where we completely critiqued it and listened to the entire thing. But here's what it sounds like just so you can kind of get the vibe for the song if you haven't seen that video it's kind of an old piano ballad this song's about eight years old here's what it sounded like then It was a cool song, but it had a lot of issues as we highlighted in our last video where we talked about it. So let's go in and let's just start with kind of drafting this in the most basic part, which is I think the piano. So for the piano on this, I wanted to use Keyscape because one of my problems with the original was that it wasn't super dynamic and realistic. We're gonna be using the Keyscape LA Custom C7 Grand Softest Piano. And I do have uh, some denoising on. I'm gonna pop it to mild right here. And then other than that, these are pretty much all the settings. What I wanted to do though is actually bring this song down to semitones because I have a lower voice now. I'm eight years older. I was 20 when I did this, I'm 28 now. So here's what this piano sounds like. I've just brought it down a whole step. And you can see that I've left the piano pretty realistic. I am not going in and super quantizing everything. I wanted it to feel like a live tracked piano because I did live track it. That was one of the things I felt was still really lacking in the kind of first version that we did for this. So once I had that piano in, what I'm gonna do is do a little bit of EQ. It doesn't need to be that deep and dark. We're gonna do a full production around it. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of reverb with crystalline. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of compression with the purple 77, basically doing some 1176 style compression just to tame those peaks. So as we start producing around this, it doesn't become this big kind of stabby piano. So now here's what the piano sounds like. And this continues through the whole song. All right, let's go ahead and let's start adding some synths and pads and extra layers. One pad that I wanted to add underneath was just kind of a nice R&B style sign pad. I'm using Vital for this. This is actually using a preset out of our upcoming uh, Vital preset pack called Synergy that we're releasing next Friday. If you don't have Vital, it's basically Serum, but you can get a completely free tier. And if you have that free tier, you will be able to use the presets that we're releasing within Synergy. There's like 200 of these things. They're kind of crazy. But actually for this song, I just needed something pretty simple. So I'm using the sign pad vibes doing this. And I'm adding in some nice seventh extensions just to add a little bit of uh, kind of sauce to that piano progression where it's not just these really, really standard triads. So here's that layered with the piano. And I just have it tucked under there really nice. The next thing that I'm doing is a little piano pad. This is also using Keyscape, but I've just added quite a bit of reverb onto this one. And I just have them an octave up so it'll add a nice little bit of sparkle. And then other than that, we've just got a nice big kind of R&B style re-space in here. So here's what this sounds like. This one is actually from Serum. I just made it on the spot, super simple. And we're taking away some low end because I don't need it to be quite that big. And then one of the main elements of the songs is we have this little vocal chop. So here's what it sounded like. I just sang this melody in. For all the vocals in this, I was using the Loughton Eden going into a uh, Heritage HA81A preamp and then going into an Audioscape 1176 Rev D. I believe the Eden was on the forward mode and I did have the like the vocal cutting filter engaged. So here's what the vocal sounds like raw. And then we're just gonna demolish that with some EQ, some reverb, some compression. Uh, what I am doing is I'm doing quite a bit of saturation with Decapitator. Just to give it some texture. And then I'm adding Doubler to add some width. 
and then just adding some repeater and some Valhalla vintage reverb just to make it sound a little bit more roomy. Uh, as far as auto tune, we're not doing like any kind of format control or anything like that. I've just left it pretty standard. And then we are just duplicating that and basically pitching it down an octave. So we have uh, the main octave and then a duplicate of a lower octave. <laughs> And I just did that by transposing it 12 semitones in auto-tune. And now I have both of those tucked in with that piano, that re-space. And this is kind of the general musical bed for this entire production now. So all of the sounds, they sound a bit more modern and a bit more current. One thing that I do want to show you is to kind of layer up some of those uh, oohs and ahs, like that kind of humming melody that I have, I'm gonna track a bunch of vocals to kind of give me a choir vibe. So here's what those sound like. I recorded this seven times and layered it over each other, and then I'm just doing some bus processing. None of these have individual processing. I'm just sending them all to an oohs and ahs bus with a doubler, some EQ, just doing some band passing, and then some vintage verb. Uh, the last EQ is just a band pass that will kind of open and close as the verse goes, just to add some dynamics. That was another thing that I thought was lacking in the last version. So here's what all these sound like. Now with the low. Now all the synths. All right, so now we are starting to cook. One thing that I do want to do is I want to add some like swell scents in. Those are kind of things that I realized that the original one had that I really liked. It kind of drives the pacing of the verse a little bit. It's been a long time since we have talked. I never knew that it be this hard. You can hear that there are like these swelling pianos. I wanted that vibe, but I wanted it to be a little bit current. So let me show you what I did. Okay, here is the first swell synth. Basically, all I did was I hit a note on a vital preset out of our synergy pack. I believe it was just one of the like distorted lead presets. And then I've added green Hoss to kind of give this some stereo separation. I don't have the saturation module engaged, just the timing module. And then what I'm doing is just adding some... Uh, you know, shelving EQ to make this a little bit brighter. And this can kind of act as a nice little ear candy. It's not doing anything crazy for the melody or for the musical bed, but it drives it a little. And it really just creates this nice big texture. And then for the second half of the chorus, or for the second half of the verse and the chorus, I'm doing that exact same thing, but I printed out one of the bells from our vital pack, and it sounds like this. Just to give us some nice, shiny little rises, where it, it's such a slow, kind of chill song. I wanted something that had a little bit of movement, but I didn't want to add like a side chain synth or anything like we had in the original. So that's pretty much the entire musical bed now for the verses. Uh, we have that. We have these little hums happening. We do have a different bass that's going to come in. Let me go ahead and pull that in. Here is the re-space that I wanted to use for the actual verse. I'm actually using a different one totally than the intro. This one has a little bit more low end. It's called Cleanest Reese Around. This is going to be from our Synergy Pack. What's cool about this is with a re-space, sometimes it's hard to keep mono compatibility because you're going to have a bass that is detuned. So you've got it kind of wobbling speaker to speaker. But what I've done is for the actual fundamental, so the sub sound, we don't have that being spread out at all. That's just one voice up the middle. What we do have is we have this extra layer where I've kind of removed that fundamental and that is being panned out. So now we can have this nice wide re-space where the top end is going to kind of give you that, that warbly effect, but the bottom end is not going to start causing these weird kind of phasing issues. So here's what this re-space sounds like. So now we've got that over all of these synths. <laughs> now
Now what we can do is we can go ahead and start adding some drums and building out the rest of this verse because that's pretty much it before we get to vocals. So let's go ahead and add in drums and percussion. So for the drums for the first half of the verse, we just need some simple snaps. One thing that I talked about in the video where we looked at the original song and critiqued it was that the snaps felt really boring and stale. And one of the things that I recommend doing is having one snap that's gonna happen every single hit and then having a kind of additional auxiliary snap that's going to kind of alternate so we have this snap called dope it's just from one of our packs i believe pop star or maybe hip hop i can't remember but it sounds like this i've added some reverb some delay and some transient so it's a really hard really harsh kind of snap it sounds great in a dense pop mix i took away a little bit of attack and added some room and some color now, this is where the snap really comes into play is I have these alternating snaps and you can see right here that I was alternating between one called doo -wop and sloppy and one called crew and sloppy. And I've kind of panned these out and then merged these all together. So if I listen to this in solo, let me take the reverb off. You can hear that we have these different textures that happen every other snap. They're slightly different. But that can add a lot, especially once you layer it with just kind of a generic snap that happens every single time. It's subtle, but things like that, especially in a pretty minimal song, will start to make a huge difference. Uh, other than that, I wanted to add some rises and hits just so we had some transitions. So I added this big seller hit from our Dark Pop pack. I added this dark hit from, I want to say Radio Ready. It's one of the older packs on our site. And then that's pretty much it for the first half of this verse. So we're leaving it really, really simple. Now for the second half, this is where the percussion does get a lot more intense. We're adding in a kick and we're going to add in this little like clock loop just to give us some backbeat. And then what we're doing is we're layering that main snap with this kind of like distorted rim hit. And what I wanted to do is simplify this kick pattern from the original because the original has a lot of cool movement, but it's kind of super chaotic. And what I've done to kind of accent that where I could leave the kick a little bit more minimal is I added in some of these different uh, percussion hits. So I've got like this wood slap right here. I've just distorted it and filtered it. Nice, cool little tonal hit. And then I have like this kind of timbale hit on one side. So wood slap on the left, wood hit on the right. And then I've got these little soft toms in here, kind of doing like a Drake idea, like his more kind of old, you know, filtered out 40 style productions. And then I've got this low space tom. So we've got wood slap and space tom on the left, soft tom and wood hit on the right. And now layered up with the drums, it does give us this kind of cool backbeat. And that to me is giving us the same vibe as the original, but it's much more simple. Let me show you in comparison. It was just doing way too much. So now the verse is pretty much done. Let me show you what I'm gonna do for the chorus. And then we're gonna go in and do some filter automation and then add vocals. So let's just go ahead and start with the drums for the chorus so we can just kind of get that over with because this is really the biggest change, honestly, of the whole song. So for the drums in the chorus, it's actually much more simple than you might anticipate. We're keeping the snaps, we're keeping that rim hit. One thing that I did do is shorten that rim hit so it's more like a gated sound. And that adds a nice little bit of sauce. The other thing is I went for a more kind of standard hip hop trappy kick, something that's got a little bit more punch and can stick out of an 808 because that's what we're going to swap to in a second. And then other than that, I just filled it in with a bunch of hi-hats. So I have my own little custom hi-hat pattern that I use just dragging in a hat from Splice. And then I found a couple different hat loops that I've kind of cut and pasted. Uh, so now we have this kind of really cool top pattern. So let me show you what that sounds like in solo. Here's all the hats and kind of top patterns together.
Then we just popped a nice kind of generic hip hop crash. And then all the drums together. And then we're gonna keep those aux drums over it as well. And that's it for all the drums and percussion for the chorus. So the main thing that changes in the chorus is instead of us doing a re-space, what we're going to do is we're going to add in an 808. And this is one thing that I completely changed from the original, but I like it so much better. Um, this is just made in vital. It's a preset called Trunk Knocker, also going to be in Synergy. This is not like a Synergy plug. I was just making all of the presets and really wanted to use them in context. So most of the presets, if they're not Keyscape, are going to be from uh, that Vital Pack we're releasing next week. And here's what the 808 sounds like in solo. It's pretty crazy. So we're following that kick pattern, but I'm alternating where it hits in the octave, and it just adds a nice little bit of movement, and it makes it feel a lot more current than the original demo. Now, other than that, we only have a couple more synths to add. Let me go ahead and pop those in there so I can show you what those are doing. It's really just a piano pad, an extra key layer, and then we have that lead from the original song. So here's a little uh, kind of layer for the keys. I called it Moneymaker Keys. That's what the preset is called. I'm just adding a bit of reverb and EQ. I've got a nice little bit of saturation on there. It sounds gnarly in solo, but it sounds really, really nice in the mix. And then we've got just a piano pad. Just using a nice little harpsichord style piano. So yeah, bellish piano out of vital. Nice little kind of top end, adds a nice little bit of like bell to it. Uh, the last thing that we have is this little back lead. This is one of the elements that honestly sticks out of the original the most to me. It sounds really abrasive in the original. Let me show you. You can hear it's like this weird buzzy lead. Let me show you what I did for this. So I've got some green hoss on it to give it a little bit more stereo spread. Other than that, it's basically just like a sine wave that I've distorted a ton. So basic sine wave with distortion and here's all of the synths and basically the entire instrumental leading up to this point, we just have one little rising impact. So. Here's what it sounds like going from pre-chorus to chorus. Now, one thing that I did want to do quite differently is in this version, I wanted to go ahead and add some filtering because that was something that I felt like was really lacking in the original. So let me go ahead and engage all of that and I'm going to show you what they're all doing. So now for the intro, we're basically doing this band pass and we've got RC20 on so the intro doesn't sound so full. Versus this. Just wanted to add a little bit of sauce. I don't need all that other stuff. Now what we're doing is we're just going to be opening and closing filters as this verse goes. And just doing little stuff like that can make a song sound so different. Let me show you what this verse sounds like now. Wow, with all of these engaged and without them. So here's with it. Here is without them. Here's with everything at full volume. It just sounds way too much for a verse, which means that we're going to have to make the chorus way too big. That's everything that I want to add in terms of instrumental. Let's add in vocals and then I'll show you how we produce those and then we're done. So here is the vocal arrangement. And like I said, this is a whole step down from the original just because I'm not 20 anymore and I'm battling a little bit of like a chest cold right now. So sorry, these vocals are not going to be the most perfect thing that you've ever heard. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look. So we have a lead vocal throughout the verses and then we have a lead vocal throughout the hook. They're pretty much the same. I just did some slightly different processing. In terms of processing, there's not a lot going on. It looks like a lot of inserts, but they're all doing 
barely anything. We've got auto tune here, you know, just doing what we got to do. And then we've just got some EQ, basically just taking out the low end because I sang this really chesty. So I'm just getting rid of a lot of that and then doing some basic compression with like an 1176 and uh, an opto compressor and then just some DSing and stuff like that. Really nothing crazy, going to the kind of usual suspects of sins. If you haven't seen that, we have a whole video on mixing vocals on the channel. It's basically exactly that setup. So here's what the lead vocal sounds like. It's been a long time since we have talked. I never knew that it'd be this hard. Much better than the original. I'm also duplicating that and using our classic low vocal effect where I'm just pitching this down in an octave and auto-tune and then I'm popping on a doubler and tucking it right under in the mix just to add a little bit of thickness to my voice. It's been a long time since we have talked. One thing that stuck out of the original was we had these really cool delay throws, so I wanted to kind of incorporate that. I just duplicated the entire track, cut out the word that I wanted to be delayed, and then added spaced out by Baby Audio. Here's the settings if you want to copy them. It's just a super simple delay throw. It sounds really nice, though. So. It's been a long time since we have talked. So for the basic arrangement for the first half of the verse, it's one lead vocal, that lower vocal layer, and then some delay throws. For the second half of the verse, this is where things really start coming in and I did it a lot differently. Now we're gonna have a left and a right vocal that sing the exact same melody as the lead throughout the entire thing. They sound a little bit like this in solo. With a lead. Tell me you found no pain. Tell me that you're okay and it's not dark. Tell me you loved all. So we do have that element in the original. We have these wider vocals that come in for the for the verse. But one thing that I wanted to do is add some harmony. So I added two different harmonies and each one is double tracked and panned out. Tell me I'm not so now we have these nice little hits on the beginning of a phrase. That's a much different tone than this. So let's go back to our version. Here's what it sounds like with a production under it. All right, so there you go. Let's go on to this chorus. So for the chorus, we have a lead in the middle. I'm losing focus, focus. We have that low vocal layer. I'm losing focus, focus. You'll pick me up. We have the left and the right singing that lead melody just completely duplicated. I'm losing focus, focus. you pick me up at my lowest, and now I'm sick. And then I wanted to really drive it home, so we have this harmony. I'm losing focus, focus. you pick me up. Sorry, it's a little rough. Again, I do have a chest cold right now. Uh, and then the second harmony. I'm losing focus, focus. you pick me up at my lowest. One thing I will say is I almost always tune my harmonies harder than my leads and I make them a lot thinner than my leads because I don't need a lot of that low mid buildup from those harmonies. I really just want that kind of texture. So here's what all of the vocals sound like now. I'm losing focus, focus, you pick me up at my lowest and now I'm sitting here hopeless and now I'm sitting here hopeless, focus. The only thing I didn't talk about is I have this little ad lib in here just for a little sauce. And then I have a reverse vocal, just helping it. And that is pretty much everything. I ended up not doing the post-chorus just because I was starting to lose my voice at the end of this again. Sinuses, be sinusin. Uh, so here's everything. This is what it all sounds like. Again, if you want to hear the original version, you can go back to the other video. I don't want to take up too, too much time and show you both. But here is what the completely redone version of my first song ever focus sounds like if I did it today.
hard I tried my best to hide the scars Yeah I know you're smiling where you are Tell me I'm not insane That I still hold your name in my heart Tell me you found no pain Tell me that you're okay and it's not dark Tell me you love the way you used to see my face From the stars From the stars And then that's where the post course would be if my voice didn't give out on me like a little bitch. And that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully you can see how different this song sounds now that I've done this eight years later. Some of you might like some of the choices I made in the original better. Some of you are going to like the new one a lot better. I personally love the new one. Honestly, I'm kind of tempted to finish it and then re-release it since I took the last one off because I was a little bit embarrassed by it. But... That's going to do it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. If you did, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. That helps out our channel a ton. If you want to check out most of these sounds that you heard in this video or you want to stay updated on any future packs that we're releasing, head over to our website, makepopmusic.com. We have sample packs, preset packs, MIDI packs, and a start-to-finish production course over there where I build out an entire song from start to finish, show you how to handle clients, invoices, contracts, all that good stuff. You can check that out over at makepopmusic.com. But that is going to do it for this week's tutorial. We will see you next week with much more content and some exciting announcements. So until then, much love, everybody. Peace.